Hello guys, hello humans, welcome to the digital literacy course. Uh, for this video, I'll be showing you how to reproduce the Excel spreadsheet that you can see on the screen. This is Excel uh, task number one. So for each task, you will need to reproduce the Excel spreadsheet that we give you. Uh, the first one is this, about the number of students achieving necessary IELTS scores. So what I'm going to do today is take you through, step by step, how to reproduce this. Then, uh, on your own, you will do it yourself. Um, I'm doing this on a Mac, so it's generally the same as a Windows computer. If you have problems finding Excel, or you don't have Excel, you can always go to the Greenwich Library and use a computer there and make your Excel spreadsheet in the Greenwich Library. <coughs> So let's get, let's get started. You will need to open Excel. <clears throat> so on my computer, it's at the bottom, but you will find it on a computer by searching Excel. Uh, so when you open it, it will ask you, uh, it will bring up this screen. So you click blank workbook because you have a blank workbook. Very exciting. <clears throat> then it looks like this. So it's completely blank at the moment. I'd recommend first saving the spreadsheet. Before you do anything, save it. <clears throat> so on any computer, you can click File, Save As, and then it will bring up what you want to save it as. Uh, it may look a little bit different on a Windows computer, but the idea is the same. So type anything you want. I will save this. Uh, at the moment, I will save it as Excel Task 1 and my name. There we go. Uh, it will say where. I will save it to the desktop. <clears throat> I usually recommend saving things to the desktop because then it's easy to find. People sometimes save them in crazy places and it's difficult to find them. Then I click save and it's saved. I may change the name of this later. This is just at the moment because some people don't save and then lose all their work. So the first thing, you'll have your task and your task looks like this. So we'll need to make kind of a table <coughs> or a box with the title. So the first thing we'll do is maybe drag across however many, it doesn't matter how many really, it's up to you. I'll drag about this many. And then we need to kind of merge and format the table. So when you click merge on Excel, you'll find there's an option called merge here. Then I will click merge and center. Then I will type in the title of the box, which is here, so number, of students achieving necessary for UK. If I if I talk to myself, it makes it seem more clear. Why? I don't know. Oh, well. So that's the title of the task that we want. You'll find at the moment it's kind of at the bottom. <clears throat> How can we change that so it's kind of in the middle, like in the example? If you go here. Uh, here you've got these kind of it looks like a, a collection of lines the ones at the bottom are usually for word and they decide where in the box you'll have your information uh, but for Excel above you can then say where you want them to be in the box at the bottom at the moment it's selected so the words are at the bottom of the box so I'll click the middle one so the words are in the middle of the box you can also have them at the top whatever it's up to you so we do this if you look here too the 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 uh, the words are in bold and the box has a border so for the words in bold you can click the b and it will make them bold here which is bold or italic or underline and we want a border next to that b i u is this box this is about borders if you click the little arrow then go down to more borders you get lots of options about the borders if we look at our example, it looks like it's kind of a double line. So what we'll do here is choose the double line one. So I clicked it at the bottom. Then I'll click up here, outline, which means it goes around the box. So when I click this OK, you'll find there is now, ta-da, kind of box with a double line. That is very nice. <laughs> uh, then we're going to make the tables here. So we've got the next one, they wanted year. So I'll type year in the box. Next one here says number of students. 
Uh, so we'll type. Uh, I'm going to do it as a number because I want to show you how to make the box wider. So when I type it like this, oh, the, the word, there are too many words for the box. This is column B. So when you then go up to column B, you'll notice the arrow changes. And then you can drag it to make the box bigger so they all fit in there. This will be the same with average score. So I'll type average score and it's too big for the box. So again, I'll click on the box and I will drag it across to make it wider. <laughs> ah, what a beautiful sneeze. <laughs> You'll notice these words are also in um, italics on the example. Italics means when they're kind of slightly to an angle. So we'll change this here. So what I'll do is click on the first one, year. Then if I hold shift on the keyboard and then press right and right again, collects all of them together. And I'll go up to next to the B is the I for italic. So I'll click there and it makes it italic. You'll notice too that the box has kind of a, a line, a dotted line around it. So the same is like a border again. So I'll click year and students and score. And then we'll go back to the border thing here, which is the arrow. More borders. And then it was kind of a dotted one. So I'll choose this one. And what I'll do, I think I'll do this again. No, they, what we do here is the border. So you can choose if you want it left side, right side. So I'll choose this one, which makes it left side. And then the bottom one to make it the bottom. <clears throat> and then the right side like this. And you'll see that that makes the border kind of across in that way. I think I'll also go back to it like this, and then you can also add lines between the boxes. So I'll go back to borders, and then I can add where there is a difference. If I click inside, it will then separate the boxes inside with here at the top. Click OK. Now we've got them separated. <coughs> uh, what they want next is the information. I'm going to start with the average score. Uh, and then go across from right to left because the year bit is a little bit different and I'll show you. So average score, uh, you can just make this up. It doesn't need to be the same as the table. <clears throat> so I'll do random ones. Uh, like This is all IELTS. IELTS goes to about 7. So usually it's a 0.5 or a whole number. Oh, I did that wrong. Let's do that again. 5.5. There we go. 6.5. 8.5. 9, something like this. And we've got these kind of numbers. Uh, but for IELTS, you need to have 0.5 or 0 0.0. And if you look at the table, there are 0 0.0 or 0.5. What I'm going to do to make this 0 0.0 on your table is to select all of them. So click on the top one, hold shift, and then go down, down, down until you've got all of them. Then I'm going to right click. So on your mouse, right click. Then go to something called format cells, which is here. This will give you lots of options. Before it was the borders. So at the moment, the, the, the kind of the tag is in blue. If I go across to number, I can then change this. Then if I click number here, I can choose what kind of numbers it will show in the table. Uh, here is an option called decimal places, and it says it to two. I'm going to change this to one, and it will make it so it looks like 0 0.0. So I just click down for one, then click OK and now it makes them 0 0.0 or 0 0.5. We'll look at these uh, in coming weeks too. Uh, next thing is the number of students. You can just type this yourself, make it up. So like do 10,003, for example. I don't know. Da, da, da. One moment, please, whilst I type the numbers. You may find if you do very varied numbers that the graph that you'll make later looks crazy. So if you like a crazy graph, go for it. If you don't, keep them fairly similar. It's up to you. I'm going to make them quite different, but it's up to you and it doesn't matter really. So you just type in some numbers. Do, 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 do. Very wildly differing years with IELTS. If any of you have ever experienced the wonderful world of IELTS, we'll see. So we've got these numbers. You'll find in the table that they want them in the middle. So I'll change this in a minute. So what uh, to put them in the middle, I'll click at the top, anywhere, shift, go across, go down. Then, remember before, we put the words kind of higher in the table. 
Here at the bottom, you can change where they are. So I'll go to center text, click, and now everything's in the center. For the year, this is different because in the graph later, we want the graph to show that it is a year. But if you just type year and the number, it doesn't realize that it is a year because it's a very stupid computer. <laughs> so what we need to do is make it a date and then a year. So I will type something like uh, 2000 and no, I won't. I'll make it a date. So for example, 1st of March 2007, something like this, and it comes like this. However, we want it to look like a year. So what we'll do is click here, we go there, and again go back to Format Cells. Here then, we had number before, it's automatically done it as a date at the moment, because I typed it in as a date. So at the moment it says like 14 stroke 3 stroke 2012 for example, so it knows it's a date. But we want it just to show the year. So we'll go to Custom, which is at the bottom, and click. Then they've got Type. So what I'm going to do here is to change it to my own type, which is YYYY, which will just make it a year. Now it's 2007, but it knows it's a date. Let me see if I can do the shortcut. It may let me, it may not. I don't think it will. No, I'll leave it. I'll try, I'll try. Uh, so what you'll do then for this is the same. So you do a couple of dates. Three. Uh, let's do that. You'll do this for all of them. Let's do it. O two. O three. And I'll do it again later just to show you how it works. So O one. Always the first of March. Don't know why. No, no special significance. You just need to give it any kind of date. <laughs> it will be okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There we go. So this will be the same for all the others too. So we'll highlight them all like that. Shift and then press down. Right click. Format cells. Same, so it's got the date. Custom, it might have the YYY that I made, it does. So we'll go bing, and it will change them all. So at the moment, we've got them all as years, but it knows it's a date. This will be useful for the graph later. Uh, so we've got all our data. What we need to do then is make a table of the total number of students <coughs> and the overall average score. So here, again, I'll make a table. You, you can choose where it goes, it doesn't really matter. So I'll choose here, and then I'll press shift right and shift down, because we just need kind of four slots. Uh, and then I'll go to borders back up here again, and down, more borders. If we look at the original one, they wanted it to be quite thick, thick black line, so we'll do that. Then I'll click outline, and then inside, and it'll make it thick and black. Very exciting. Uh, here, I'll type total... Uh, was it number of students and then here was that I think it was the average score yes overall we got it here but how do we work this out I mean you could just type the number but the point is we're teaching you how to uh, kind of do it more easily what you need to do for total number of students is you need to do something called a sum the sum means it will add everything together so this needs uh, a kind of special uh, code in order to make uh, the sum. So what you do, in the box where I want the total to go, I've clicked here, so it's here, which is cell C15. Then at the top here, I will click equals sum, then brackets. Then I go from the kind of the first number that I want to do the total of, do the last. So here it is B5. Then I do dot dot, and then it will go to B13. If you notice on the screen, it will also automatically go blue, so you can see what it is. So it says equals sum B5, B13, then press enter, and it makes the total. Uh -huh. You can also do this by clicking on the kind of Greek sum over here as well, but I thought I'd just give you the score just in case. Same as here, we'll do the average so in the one below it, do the average. There's an option here, but I'll also type it just so you can see what I'm on about. So the, the average, and then this is the same kind of thing. So this will be 
C5 dot dot C is it 13 yes then close it's already worked it out bang and it will give you your average score here my says 7 the because I did my own numbers the example says 7 what a coincidence uh, yours might say something different it doesn't really matter as you're going along remember to save ah, save 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 that way so you've got your sum and you've got your average and it will be here what we need to do now I think we're almost there. So what we need to do now is to um, make the two graphs. The graphs, you, you, you don't need to make too much. So what we'll do here for the graphs, click on year, then shift and go across to number of students, and then we'll go down, 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 down. So we've got, the, these are the two pieces of data we want for the first graph. When we go up, we go to insert, then You've got lots of different kind of charts. I'd recommend just go to recommended charts <clears throat> and then you'll see that it will kind of give you an example chart of what you want. So there's lots of different ones that you can have. Uh, I will go with the scatter graph. There we go. And it will come up with this. So on the side we've got the number of students and here we've got the years. So we'll go. I can drag that and click it up. What was the title? number of students with necessary IELTS scores. So if you click on this, you can then slightly change it. There we go, and you've got your first graph. I've got the word number, they used a hashtag, doesn't matter, no worries. Then you click, I'll click save, because I'm a very, very cautious person. <laughs> uh, so but then we need the second graph. This is a little bit different, because uh, you uh, we're doing like the, the data is kind of separated this time. So we've got year and average score. So again, we'll click year, shift, and go down. Then if you're on a Mac, you use the command button. Or if you're on a uh, PC, you use the control button. You click average score, hold shift, go down. That way it makes it like this. Then it's the same system, insert, Recommended charts, then you choose one, it's up to you. I'll go with the, the old scatter graph is quite nice. So again, you just put it here next to it, something like this will do, average score. Ta-da, you have um, a your finished uh, Excel spreadsheet. Then you save. When you come to upload, and I'll show you uploading a bit later on another video. When you're finished, you click save. I did it originally as Excel task with my name, I'll also do it with my stu student number. So you then put your student number. So if you have like, do, 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 put that so that we can find it. There you go. That way you have your finished Excel table. Thank you guys. Now you can do yours. Become a genius.